afternoon. My name is Deandra Coleman I'm with the Virginia SBDC Network. For those of you that are not familiar with our organization, the Virginia Small Business Development Center is a partnership program between the U.S. Small Business Administration, George Mason University, and local host institutions throughout Virginia. With 27 locations across the Commonwealth, we provide training and technical assistance to small businesses in their local communities. Our one-on-one -on -one consulting services are available at no charge. Today's webinar, Cybersecurity Awareness Month and How to Get Your Business Involved, is presented by the Virginia SBDC and is part of our cybersecurity series that discusses how to protect your small business's digital information. We have some workshops coming up in the future. Be sure to check those out. They are going to be more of a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, we'll have a small group rather, um, but it'll be more attentive. Um, so if you are interested in those workshops, we have our first uh, is setting up backups, protect your critical information. And this is on September 21st and 22nd. So two different days you can choose from. You can go onto our website and register for one of those. We are recording today's presentation and it will be posted on our website. You will receive an email with the, a link to the recording and the slides. Due to the large number of participants, everyone's microphone is muted. But if you have questions during the participation, you can type those into the Q&A box. We have also enabled the live transcript function, which you can show or hide via your meeting controls. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter for today's session. Tom joined the United States Army after high school and served 20 years as a counterintelligence agent with assignments in the US, Germany, and Middle East. He deployed in support of Operation Desert Shield, Desert Storm in 1990, and Iraqi Freedom in 2003. After leaving active duty, he has worked as a cybersecurity consultant for over 20 years with large firms like PricewaterhouseCooper, KPMG, Verizon, and Alvarez and Marcel. Since arriving in Winchester, Tom started True North Group, which, which is committed to guiding small and medium businesses in the protection of their critical information from cyber threats of today and tomorrow. Tom joined the Virginia Small Business Development Center, <clears throat> excuse me, in 2020 and works as the cybersecurity counselor for Virginia, providing cybersecurity training, insight, and strategies at no cost to business owners. Please join me in welcoming our presenter for today, Tom Stimulus. Thank you, thank you very much. And thank you everybody for, uh, for joining today. Uh, you know, we, we're really excited. Uh, you know, as I, they said, I joined a year ago, uh, actually in October was when we started and we're just coming up on that one year. And we have, uh, you know, over the last year, we've done a lot of Facebook lives. We've done a number of, of different presentations on different types of security, whether it be awareness or the fundamentals. And we really wanted to take advantage of Cybersecurity Awareness Month, which is in October, and kind of share with you some of the things that the government has put in place, uh, things that uh, free resources that you can take advantage of to really grow, or I guess you'd say expand the, the understanding of cybersecurity and understanding the uh, how to, to protect your information and doing that with your employees, also with your clients, your customers, and even your family. So uh, why don't we get started? And we will uh, go through this. So today's agenda is gonna be uh, going over a couple of things here. We've got, you know, what is Cybersecurity Awareness Month? When did it start? Uh, you know, during the month, we're gonna have different weekly themes then uh, we're gonna cover a couple of ways that you can get involved at work, uh, ways that you can get involved at home, uh, things that you can do online. Then um, as we uh, talked about, we're gonna talk about some of the events and the topics that we're gonna be doing uh, specifically, you know, here at the Virginia SBDC. Uh, go over some next steps, uh, and then some resources that are available to you. And then of course, answer, you know, any questions that you may have. Uh, Please understand that everyone that's attending today will get a PDF copy of this. So don't uh, worry about writing down all of the, you know, any of the websites or any of the hashtags or anything like that. You'll, you know, we're going to send this to you immediately after and you'll be able to pull all that information from there. So, as I said, every October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Uh, the theme or the hashtag that they're going to be using is really, you know, or is do your part, uh, be cyber smart. And that's uh, gonna 
cover a lot of things that we can do personally. Uh, we can also do within our schools and we can do uh, within our employment, whether we're an employee or actually an employer. So Cybersecurity Awareness Month uh, started in 2004 and it was really an opportunity for industry and government to, to work together. Um, there's always been a disconnect between industry and the government because the government doesn't own the infrastructure. The infrastructure is owned by private organizations and, but the government has uh, an obligation to work with industries to protect that because our communication networks are considered critical infrastructure and there's always been that balance and there's always been those individuals like, well, you need to mandate this. The government really can't mandate it. They can only really provide guidance or they can try to mandate it, but it's very challenging. So they really started this to, to get industries in the government to work together toward that common goal. Uh, it is led by the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Uh, and it's really just to raise awareness. Uh, you know, we all have, every month we have some new or some type of different uh, cause that maybe we weren't fully aware of. This is just an opportunity for us to raise more awareness. We all deal with cybersecurity on a daily basis, but sometimes uh, if it doesn't directly impact us, we don't really understand the threats and the vulnerabilities and the, and the risks that we're taking with either our personal data or our client data or our, or our business data. And this is really just a, like I said, that one time a year, where we can focus on it, get that education out and, and hopefully carry that on into 2022. So in last year, uh, you know, last year, everyone was distracted, but they still had cybersecurity month. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was really do your part, be cyber smart. Yeah, it can sound a little cheesy, but you know what? It rhymes. Uh, it's easy to remember. It's because remember, it's not just uh, employers or industries. We're, we're really doing this also with uh, colleges, uh, middle school, high schools, and individuals. And, you know, you've got individuals from, you know, children all the way to our seniors. So you really kind of want to get that, that uh, theme that everyone can kind of embrace. Um, it also really talks about the shared responsibility. And, you know, I've done a number of webinars and also all throughout my career, um, I've heard people say, that's not my job. All right, uh, which is not true. It, it's it's really all of our jobs. Uh, the IT department and and I tell everybody all the all the time the IT department does not own the information. The information is owned by the business owners. So if you're in charge of finance, or if you're in charge of supply, or if you're if you're in charge of any department, all of that information is your responsibility. You own the information. The IT department are the stewards of that information. Their job is to make sure that it is accessible and to make sure that it is um, available. And they do protect it. They have a responsibility to protect it, but they don't own the information. Uh, so therefore, it really is a shared responsibility between the IT department and everyone else in the organization because IT is limited. And even though we believe that security is a top priority, and it is, it all it doesn't always get the attention that it deserves because there are other things that sometimes push you aside. So you may have your IT person uh, getting ready to update with the latest patches from Microsoft, but the email goes down. Guess what gets pushed off? Not the email. Because when the CEO or the president or the owner of a company calls the IT department and they can't get their email or the salespeople can't do their job, everything comes to a halt. And we've all seen that. When email goes down, the world goes into chaos. So it doesn't matter what those IT people are doing, doesn't matter what tasks they're doing, no matter how important it is, it's not as important as getting that email back up. So when they do get it back up, 
then they have to refocus and hopefully they can get back to what they were doing. But a lot of times security requirements get pushed off because operational requirements take precedent. So October 1st is the beginning of Cybersecurity Month. And uh, as I said, there's going to be a, a theme each week. All right. And we're going to, these are the four themes. And we're going to touch a little more in depth about what the theme is and, and what they're trying to accomplish. So we'll have our kickoff, uh, or it will get kicked off on Cybersecurity Awareness Month on the 1st. And then on the 4th, there's going to be a week focusing on how to be cyber smart. Uh, and then the second week is going to be Fight the Fish. Yeah, I know, still cheesy. But uh, it's phishing is really, really important to understand because we all dealt with it. Where it directly impacted us was with the Colonial Pipeline uh, event or ransomware event that occurred earlier this year. That ransomware was delivered through a phishing medium, uh, either through a, uh, you know, it was through a phishing email, uh, a, a link or a document, somehow it got through their, their technical controls and also maybe uh, the individual or individuals that clicked on it might not have been um, well-trained. I know they're trained, but maybe they were well-trained. Maybe they missed something. Maybe it was just so good that, uh, you know, they, they just couldn't tell. You know, that's something that they're still sorting out. A lot of that information is not really out there, but it's important that all of us understand what a phishing email is. I mean, I get them daily. I get them on my Gmail. I get them in my work email. I get them on my texts. I get phishing texts all the time. Uh, and they're all putting us at risk personally and also um, professionally. So it's really important that we focus on that um, because that is probably the number one issue that's going to affect small and medium businesses because it's so easy to push out a phishing email and that uh, everyone is definitely a target. Um, then uh, the third week we're going to talk about uh, basically cybersecurity careers. Now that may not affect impact you directly. Well actually I will tell you it does impact you directly because there is a shortage, a severe shortage uh, of, of cybersecurity I hate using that term, of individuals who are trained in security and in securing data, in securing networks, in securing applications. Um, depending on what you read, you'll hear anywhere between a shortage of 500,000 up to a million uh, jobs. So if you're not happy with the job you have, there are plenty of opportunities uh, to get into the cybersecurity industry. Uh, but that week is also for us to talk to our children, talk to our students, make them aware that there are lots of different opportunities. Not all of them have, you don't have to be a coder to get into cybersecurity. You don't have to, there are so many different avenues for that. It's really just to raise awareness. And as a small business owner or medium business owner, or even a large business owner, the shortage of, of talent in this field hurts everyone because um, you can't get the talent that you need. There's, there's really no one available. Um, you know, and, and if you look in, there's a problem you know, where you have these chief information security officers and there is already a shortage of qualified uh, individuals in this industry. There's even a less, there's even more uh, of, a, of a need of well-trained uh, chief information security officers, all right? There, there aren't that many of them, and of the ones that there are, there aren't that many that are good. So the ones that are good gets picked up by the Fortune 100, the Fortune 200, Fortune 500 companies. That doesn't leave a whole lot of, of uh of knowledge and experience to help small and medium businesses. Now, you can say, well, Tom, why are you not a CISO? I'm not a CISO because I don't want to deal with enterprises, all right? I did that for 20 years. I made a conscious decision to start my company to focus on small and medium businesses because there's a need 
for for this entire group. I mean, small and medium businesses make up 54%, you know, depends on who you have, 54 to 56% of our gross national product. So basically small and medium businesses is the largest enterprise in the United States. No other enterprise, Apple, Google, no one can even come close to the amount of revenue that we collectively generate. But because we are smaller groups, even though we make up a larger portion, uh, we don't necessarily have the support that, uh, that, that's available to larger enterprises because it's, it's harder to deal, it's harder to sell, it's harder to deliver to these smaller organizations. But the reason I wanted to do this is because when you're in a community, wherever you live, uh, a lot of those small businesses are part of your community. They're actually a fabric of that community. And when those businesses disappear, nothing can replace them. You know, if you have a business that's been in your town or your city for a hundred years, uh, regardless of whether it's a restaurant, a hardware store, manufacturing company, um, if they disappear, that history disappears with them. Now, maybe another uh, restaurant opens up, maybe a chain, uh, maybe a Home Depot with a hardware store, but they don't bring the, they can't bring back that. They, that, they don't have the same um, impact that these smaller businesses that were there from the beginning that have grown over time. So that's really why I've been working with the Virginia SBDC. That's why I have my company because I feel that, you know, I like where I live here in Winchester. I like the people, I like the community and I want it to stay and prosper. I don't want it to be full of box stores and full of chain restaurants. I want it to have its own unique character. And the only way we can do that is by helping each other, uh, you know, get an understanding because regardless of whether COVID stays, is not here, disappears, cyber threats are always gonna be there. And because we uh, wanna do business and we wanna expand, we have to embrace the internet. Uh, it, there are very few companies that are gonna be able to not address the internet or not, or not deal with technology and still be prosperous. And then the last week is we're going to be cybersecurity first. It's things that you can do in your own organization to really uh, get that message out to your employees, but also your clients and your, um, your customers, letting them know that you understand what the risks are. And these are the things that you're doing to protect that data that they're entrusting you with. So being cyber smart, uh, if you've attended any of my uh, presentations, uh, you've heard me say this. If you haven't, uh, they are all recorded and they're all available on the Virginia SBDC site. But being cyber smart is understanding the fundamentals. And the fundamentals, one of the biggest fundamentals is that we talk about is passwords. Um, you know, in a digital world, there are only three ways to authenticate an individual uh, as being the person that they're claiming to be. Uh, that is something they know, which would be like a password, something they have, which is a token, or in this case, our, our phones, which are always with us, and then who they are. And that would be more of a biometric, uh, whether it be a fingerprint, a voice recognition, retinal scan, something like that. But those are the only three ways. So, and initially it's always been passwords. And those passwords, um, you know, have, because we never really enforced uh, complex passwords, there are a lot of individuals that use what we call weak passwords. So what they're trying, what we're, what we're trying to do is to get you to create a passphrase. And what a passphrase is, is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's just a long, you know, whatever, let's just say uh, one that I used to use when I actually ate there was Taco Bell is the best restaurant, all right? Now, uh, I would change that and the uh, for the A, it would be the at sign. For the O, it could be a zero. Uh, for the I, it could be an exclamation point. Uh, but that passphrase would be what I said, you know, Taco Bell is the best restaurant, 
I type it in all the time. I always remember it, but I altered it to where uh, it would be nearly impossible to decrypt if someone tried to um, use a, 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 an application to break passwords. Um, the challenge of that though is that they may not be able to crack my password if they have the encrypted file. So if they go into another organization, like let's just say they break into my bank and my bank has my username and I use that passphrase and that file is encrypted, they're not gonna be able to break it. All right, it's too long, it's too complex. It's gonna take them tens of thousands of years to do that. The problem though that we run in with using a passphrase for everything is that unfortunately there are organizations that don't encrypt the password file. And we've seen that happen a number of times where we get alerted that there was a breach with this company and that it was uh, in, unencrypted and that all the usernames and the passwords are now on the dark web. And you can go to this site to see if your, you know, your account was done. So then you're gonna have to go pat, change all of that. So that's where multi-factor authentication becomes very important because even with the password, if they don't have that second factor, which is most of the time your phone, uh, where either they send you a, a one-time password and a text, or you have an application uh, that you go in and you know they give you a six-character uh, number that changes every thirty seconds. They don't have the pass. They don't have the second factor. They're not going to be able to get into that account. Okay, so that's why if you can use multi-factor, and a lot of organizations use it. Amazon uses it. Google uses it. Wherever you can use it for free, I highly recommend you activate that multi-factor authentication. Um, now, a password manager, and that's probably what I tell everybody. I tell everybody to use password manager. Um, you're sitting on a thousand dollar device, uh, investing thirty dollars to have a password manager is probably one of the best investments you can make. It will, um, what it does is it, it will keep all of those passwords unique. It will keep it in a secure vault, a digital vault, which only you have access to. Nobody else has access to it. Not even the company that owns the application or developed the application. That's how they created it. Um, and it, it also will generate the passwords for you. So you can pick the number of characters, how you want it, and it'll just generate it for you. And then when you go to that site, it'll actually, load the username, the password, and hit enter for you. It's seamless. Um, I highly recommend everyone look into password managers. There are some great ones out there. Uh, and, you know, they are, a lot of them are also cross-platform, which means that it will work on Mac and PC. And also where, because it's a centralized vault, when you update it on your PC, it will be uh, updated on your Mac, on your iPhone, on your tablet, on your iPad. You only have to do it one time. Um, it's really, like I said, probably one of the best investments other than a VPN uh, that you could make to make your life easier and to protect your identity. And then we talk about software updates. You know, I tell everybody on all of my presentations, there are two types of people. There are people who check their oil and people who don't check their oil. If you check your oil, then you will most likely do those updates in a reasonable amount of time when you are notified. If you don't check your oil, and you all know who you are that don't check your oil, then I recommend you go into the settings and you tell Windows to or Mac to download and install the updates as they are published. One less thing you ever have to worry about, because um, unpatched machines is probably the third the number three way uh, that uh, hackers break into our systems. And then we talk about backing up, um, you know, and, and also <laughs> if you've been on my calls, you hear me say that if you don't back up, don't bother doing anything else, right? Just don't waste your time. Because even if we didn't have cyber threats, all of our data sits on devices with moving parts. We should all appreciate that if it has moving parts, it is going to break, not it might break, it is going to break. And it's always gonna break at the worst possible time. So therefore I tell everybody, and I tell people to use the three, two, two strategy. 
back it up. If it's important, back it up on three, three separate times, three separate backups, right? Two different types of mediums, which would mean like uh, cloud or, uh, or an external drive or DVDs. Because remember, you're not backing up the operating system. You're really just backing up the data. Uh, and then the other two is you should have at least two offsites. One could be offsite storage like uh, iCloud or OneDrive, or it could be an external drive that you maintain at another location away from your office. All right, so here we go for phishing. And when we talk about phishing, phishing is really a criminal who is trying to make a, a email look legitimate and to get you to interact with that email, either through clicking on a, um, a file or clicking on a link. And from that point, that will give them the ability to most likely infect your computer and then ultimately infect your network, all right? With something, it could be, and we say malware. Now that malware could be a virus, that could be a Trojan, or what the choice now is ransomware. So, so when you look at these emails, you know, look at, approach it like you do with the, with the same, um, knowledge and the same recommendations you give your children, right? Don't talk to strangers. If the email is coming from someone or some entity you don't know, most likely it's a stranger and you don't talk to them. You just delete them, okay? Or you take a few extra minutes or seconds or whatever to look at it and inspect it more than you would from someone that you regularly get emails from. That's the biggest thing right there. And they always try to hook us with something. Uh, your Costco credit card is about to uh, expire or congratulations, you know, you shopped at Costco this week and uh, you are, uh, are in our drawing, click here to see what you want. And you're like, wow, I do shop at Costco. But then you need to understand that Costco doesn't do that. Uh, so that's really where we have to be cautious. Uh, and it's always misspellings, uh, unusual formatting. Uh, and if you don't do business with them, it's a phishing email. All right. So if you get something from American Express and you don't have an American Express card, it's a phishing email. Uh, so you got to be very aware of that. And also, you want to make sure you report it somehow. Um, if you're if you're small, then you want to reach out to your boss. If you are a larger organization, your IT department may have something in place. They may have tools already in place where you click on a button that says suspected phishing. They'll look at it. But the biggest thing is you don't want to just sit on it. Even if you identify it as phishing, you don't want to just delete it because if you have 100 other people, that's 99 more people that may actually click on it. If you forward it to IT and they identify it as a phishing email, they can pull that off the server. And that way, the other 99 people may not even get the chance to even look at it and potentially click on it. So as we said, you know, Security Awareness Week, it's going to be talking about the challenges that we currently have uh, in the industry. It's, it's We want to let people know uh, that there are all of these opportunities that are out there. That includes students, and that includes students even in middle school, all right? Um, middle school students are getting into technology. Uh, they're understanding that, you know, it's not like we're telling them to pick a career, but we want to let them know that, you know, there are multiple different avenues that you can take to get involved. Uh, it's the way I look at it is, in our lifetime, we are never going to fill all of those positions. So you will always be in a, a field that will have a demand. You will always be able to get a job. You may not be able to get a job in your specific city, but outside of your city, uh, maybe remotely, maybe in a you know, different state, you'll always be able to get a job. You're never going to have to look for work because as we become more reliant on technology, Criminals are going to find more ways to exploit it, and that's going to require more people to defend against it. 
So it's really just a great opportunity to share this information uh, about the challenges and some of the things that, you know, some of the, the certifications that people can do, some of the training that they can do. A lot of colleges are now offering bachelors in, uh, in IT security. So there's a lot of different avenues and a lot of these certifications, high school kids can actually get uh, before they even graduate high school. So they can have some of these functional uh, certifications in place before they ever even go to college, if they choose to go to college. This is one of those fields you don't have to go to college for. Uh, you can, it's based off of your skill sets and your capabilities. So it gives, uh, you know, it gives young people uh, a choice, you know, maybe one that they didn't think they actually had. And then the last week, is cybersecurity first. Now I asked why cybersecurity first is last. They said, well, they're, it's too late to change the order. Uh, but really it's about making cybersecurity a priority in our businesses. And a lot of us and a lot of our businesses don't. And it's not that they don't want to. It's that they are, you know, in, in with last year, there, you know, a lot of businesses struggle just to keep open and thinking about an issue that is not tangible because our data sits on a device. Um, we don't even have a, a good understanding of how much data that is. You know, ask somebody how many pieces of paper a gigabyte is. Doubtful, you know, unless you're in IT, you're ever going to be able to answer that question. So you don't have that visual representation of how much data you are actually have. And that would include, you know, what we use PII, you know, personally identifiable information, uh, PHI, protected health information, which falls under HIPAA, uh, PCI, which is payment card information. So if you do any type of e-commerce or commerce, you're processing data that way. And that has nothing to do with your own intellectual property, your own financial documentation, legal documentation, uh, po policies, anything that you've created is marketable, is something that a criminal wants. Um, you know, there's uh, corporate espionage. So if you are, even if you're a small company and you're working on something, you know, that could change the world, uh, you've got to protect it. Because if you don't, someone's going to steal it and then they're going to go to market before you do. And then you're probably not going to stay in business. So it's really important to make this a priority. But making it a priority does not mean that you're going to necessarily or that you're going to increase uh, your workload. It's just understanding that we want to make our companies a little less desirable to a criminal than they are today. And it's no different than we do with our houses. Um, we, you know, we, we find ways to protect our homes to keep criminals from wanting to enter our homes. We have doors, windows, we have locks, we have cameras, we have alarm systems, we have sensors, uh, we have, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, landscaping, right, in specific ways, we have gates. All of that is to control who has access to our homes. You're gonna use, we're using the same concept with who has access to our networks. So if you can protect your home, then you can protect your network. And it's really, those are some of the things that we'll talk about. So big thing is, is we really want everyone and we want the people who participate in this to make everyone understand that it's, it's all of our jobs and that if we all work together toward that common goal, it really protects a lot of things. It protects the company and the workers being like, well, why do I want to protect the company? Well, you want to protect the company because you want a job. Uh, you may complain about going to work on Monday, but you're going to complain a lot more if your boss calls you and tells you you can't come to work because he has to shut down or she has to shut down the company. All right. So it's really important that we all get involved. We all understand that, you know, we're protecting this data because we all rely on our, our, our businesses and our industries. So some of the things that we can do, um, you know, there's going to be, uh, and I'm going to cover what you get this, but basically you can sign up 
And when you sign up, you're going to get uh, an email uh, from the CISA that's going to give you a lot of templates to, so that you can uh, put out these promotions in advance, that you can have some training. They'll, they'll give you a workbook so that you can do a mock phishing simulation. So if you don't have phishing software uh, because it's not in the budget, you can still do a phishing simulation to see how aware uh, or how trained your staff are. You can host uh, lunch and learns, you know, where you can talk about cybersecurity topics that are relevant to your industry. Uh, and that way you can kind of get more people on board, allow people to ask questions. And then, of course, you can use the logo to co-brand, you know, on your website, digital materials, printed materials. And what that does is it sends a message to your customers and your clients and your partners that you are making cybersecurity a priority. But it's not just at work that it's important. We have a responsibility to train our children and to, you know, take care of our parents. Uh, because, you know, we look at our children as being vulnerable. They're vulnerable because they may not truly understand the, the requirements of privacy, but it's not from a technical perspective. Our, our seniors, though, um, they may have more challenges from a technical perspective. They may be more trusting. And we've all heard stories of how uh, a friend's mother or a friend's father, you know, uh, got the pop-up that said, your computer has been infected and you need to call this number in order for us to help you clean it. And then they call and they give their credit card and they get charged $5,000 and it was just a scam. Uh, and that's because of lack of education. Uh, you know, we can't assume that our seniors uh, fully understand all of the risks that are uh, out there with cybersecurity. So we want to make sure that we can take cybersecurity a month to, to you know, basically uh, educate as many people as we can. Um, a couple of things, you know, there's going to be the big social media push. So if you're on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, uh, you know, you'll have an opportunity to uh, to be involved in it. You can follow, you know, these hashtags. So there, there's probably going to be great individuals, uh, personal individuals and organizations that are going to be sharing some great tips that you can take and look over and determine whether it's a right fit for your organization. Uh, you can also, they'll be, uh, they'll be sharing sample media posts so that you can actually cut and paste them and send them out for your own uh, on your own social media. And that social media will allow you to talk to your customers and talk to your clients and get all of that as well. And then, uh, and then like I said, they'll give you the logo and you can uh, use that how you want and just get that message out. And then you may even want to blog. And, and when I say blog, not specifically about cybersecurity, but how does cybersecurity impact your industry or your business, uh, or you know, maybe even share with your customers and clients something that you learned as a result of Cybersecurity Month, because that is all about trust. We spend thousands of hours, thousands of dollars, and thousands of hours of training our employees to build this trust with our clients so that they want to do business with us. It's amazing how quickly a data breach can destroy all of that work to where you will may have people never want to come back to you uh, because you they don't trust you anymore. They, they don't feel that they can trust you with their financial information or your med their medical information or personal information because now their identity might have been stolen or they have to work extra hard now to protect their identity because of something that may have occurred with you that they may feel was avoidable. We work way too hard to build the, our reputations. We don't want a single event to destroy them. So you know that's another way of letting out to your, your clients that you do care and that you're doing what you can. And that's all anybody really wants, you know, do, what you can do your due diligence and that's going to be more than a lot of other organizations that don't do anything so some of the things that we have going on in virginia that you can take uh, advantage of is every tuesday 
uh, we do a cybersecurity Facebook Live, or I do one. Uh, and I, what I do is I pick a topic and I spend, you know, seven to 10 minutes simplifying that topic. And so it's not information overload. It's really, uh, you know, we do, we've done a lot of different topics. We've done firewalls, we've done phishing, ransomware, uh, open Wi-Fi, virtual private networks. And we're going to continue to do those. All of them have been recorded. They're all available on our YouTube channel, as well as our Facebook. So if you, you can go search, they're also all available on my own, on my own business website. So there's lots of different avenues for you to, to find those if there's ever a topic that you're curious about. Uh, and we'll continue to do those. Uh, also, um, during Cybersecurity Awareness Month, you have lots of organizations that do panels. You'll get really smart people. They'll talk about a topic, and then they'll, you know, and, and you might learn something. You, you know, you will learn something. But what we're going to do is we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do small group classes because I've talked a lot about backup, encryption, things like that. So we're going to spend this month showing you how to do it. All right. So we're going to keep these classes to 15 individuals. Uh, we are going to have, you know, more than one. Uh, and if you have to do more, we will. But these are going to be, you know, one hour classes where I'm going to show you how to set up your backups for your PC, how to set up your backups for your Mac. So it's going to be cross platform because we use both. Uh, I'm going to show you how to encrypt your devices. Now, the stuff that I'm talking about here, when you look at backups, encryption, um, automatic, you know, setting up automatic, I'm sorry, automatic backups, I should have said uh, automatic updating, uh, securing a network, those all are at no cost to you. Uh, class, but it doesn't cost you anything to do it because your operating systems already have them built in. You just have to activate it. So it's not like we're going to say, well, you need to go spend $200 here and another 100 there. It's literally taking advantage of the capabilities that are already part of your devices. That's our first step. Um, and then VPNs, you know, there are some of you may already have VPN capabilities as part of a firewall that you have. Uh, you know, there are free VPNs, there are, are four costs. We're going to talk about, you know, why it's important, all right? And I tell everybody, never, never, never use open Wi-Fi without a VPN, okay? Never. People say, well, I just go and look at uh, my, my Instagram. Fine. But you, you know, sometimes you still have to log into that Instagram. So I tell everybody, if, don't use Starbucks, don't use airport, don't use hotel, don't, and never, I mean, never. Just never, all right? And if you're a business, you need to make it mandatory, like in a policy that your employees are never allowed to use open Wi-Fi. It's one of the most dangerous, easiest ways for bad people to get access and to get all of your passwords, to get all of your usernames, to get all of your financial and credit card information. You know, it's, it's, it's simple, okay? So I tell everybody, you gotta use a VPN. Um, it's, it's just one of the things that we have to do. And now that we have so many people who are remote and some of us who may re re remain remote forever, uh, it's even more important because you're letting them get access into your, your house, all right, uh, without ever authenticating who that individual is. Uh, so these are some things that uh, all of the dates will be at the Virginia SBDC site. Uh, it's under training. You see webinars. There are a tremendous amount of training, not just for cybersecurity. So I highly encourage you, if you don't leverage the Virginia SBDC, you really should. Because there is training for finance, marketing, e-commerce, uh, websites, you name it. Uh, the Virginia SBDC has some type of training or counselor to help you uh, go through it. And the one big thing is you can trust them, all right? There's a lot of information out there you can't trust or that you have to kind of vet, but the Virginia SBDC does it for you. They vet everybody before they let us become advisors. So if we're here, they've done their due diligence to make sure we know what we're talking about and that they're willing to let us talk to you. So definitely, if you can take advantage of them, take advantage of them. So what are your next steps? First step is go to 
uh, you go to the link here on the Cybersecurity Awareness Month and you sign up as I, what I would recommend is you sign up your company as a cybersecurity champion. Uh, there's a list, there's a, there's a tab there that talks about cybersecurity champions. Um, I'm on there. A lot of other companies are on there. All the lists are there. Uh, universities can join. High schools can join. Nonprofits can join. There's no cost. But what they do is they will send you a resource, a, a lot of resources to basically take all of the heavy lifting out of the way for you. Uh, and then, of course, on social media, uh, follow those hashtags and just get involved. I mean, we're all on Instagram. We're all already posting stuff. Uh, just kind of add that to what you are already doing. Um, if you have a marketing organization working with you, get them, give them the information and tell them that you want them to add those posts uh, throughout the month or before the month, all right? And uh, just some more steps that you can do at work and school, uh, you know, send out a PR, you know, send out a, a PR from your company. You can uh, post those virtual uh, or training events. Uh, we have those as well. Uh, you know, use the logo, let people know. I, I mean, you know, some people might say, oh, well, it's going to make me a target. No, it's not. You're already a target. OK, so it's not going to make you a target what it's going to. And, and you know what? You don't care about the bad guys. The bad guys have already targeted you, whether you put the logo on or not. What you care about is that your customers see that because that provides them a level of comfort that, you know, everyone thinks about, but not maybe everyone actually uh, mentions. Uh, you know, brown bag, they're always great for your culture. If you can do that, uh, where you can bring people together either virtually uh, or, uh, or hybrid, whatever, and you can discuss it. And it gives people an opportunity to ask some questions. Uh, and then, of course, if you don't have the answers, then you can definitely uh, set up one-to-ones with uh, the counselors within the uh, SBDC and get those answers for your employees. So you don't even have to do that work. Uh, we'll help you. All you got to do is set up an appointment with us. And then you can do promotions. You can do discounts if you want, giveaways, competitions. Um, you know, there are organizations that do fishing, uh, you know, competitions where they'll send them out and I try to identify the individuals that identify the phishing emails, you know, and whatever. You give them a, a, an Amazon gift card. Uh, it's amazing how involved people will get for a $25 Amazon gift card. Um, so these are just some things you can even do it with your customers. Uh, so there's a lot of different avenues. We just got, you know, you can be as creative as you want. So here's like, you know, said a ton of information. Uh, what I'd like to do is spend some time and answer a few questions for you guys if you have any. And, um, and then the last two slides are just those resources that are available. So we have these resources here and then the information there about how you can keep in touch and how you can get involved. So uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody may have. All right, thanks so much, Tom. Um, we do have a question that was actually, it was asked a uh, few ways back in the presentation. Uh, does the password manager store all of the passwords of a user in their own storage so it can be replicated in all of their devices? So, yes, uh, I'll just talk about the one that I use. And this is not me telling you to use this password manager. It's just the one that I'm most familiar with. Uh, I use 1Password, and I originally started using 1Password because I use Macs, and it was the best one for Macs. It's now cross-platform, so it does PC and Mac. The way that works is it creates a, uh, a secure vault, a secure encrypted vault that I only have the key to. And then I have a choice of either keeping it on my computer or I can, or now I actually have it in iCloud. I used to use Dropbox a long time ago, but I don't use Dropbox anymore. So what happens is I store it in my iCloud and then all of my uh, other devices that I load one password on, I point to that iCloud and then all of my passwords are synced. So I have, I don't know, like 800 different passwords or I use it in multiple different ways because it does secure files, it does identities, credit information. It also does like all of my uh, membership cards, everything. So if I load it onto a new phone, 
and I load the app, once I configure it, it downloads all of the passwords. So yes. And then if I make a change on any of those devices, it syncs with iCloud and then it syncs across all of my other devices. So that's what I use. Uh, there were some that you that keep the vault online. I think that was LastPass, but LastPass had some cybersecurity incidents. I don't know if they've changed that, but most of them do it in the same manner as 1Password does. Uh, we have a, had a question uh, from Lynn. She said she found the answer, but I wanted to ask in case anyone else was looking, uh, where do I go on the website to register to get the promotional items to share with our clients? Do you know where they would go on the website? Yes. Uh, hold on. I think I actually have that website up. Where did I put it? So when you go to that, let me see that. If you go to that link, let up. if you go to stay safe online, dot org slash cybersecurity awareness month that's mm -hmm. going to pull up uh the website and i believe it's the third or fourth option down it'll say uh, get involved or become a cybersecurity champion when you yep. sign up uh you'll sign up with your company name and your information and your email and then you'll get an email uh from them and do i even have an email i do so let me and I think this is um, under become a champion because yes. I just clicked it on my end. So when you become a champion, uh, I'm just going to, I'm not going to pull it up on the screen, but basically what it does is it says, you know, dear champion. Uh, and then what they do is they give you the cybersecurity awareness toolkit. There's a PDF guide, sample press releases, uh, sample emails to send to your, to your employees. Uh, a PowerPoint presentation, which is very similar to this one that I right hear. It has almost the same amount of exact information that you could give to your uh, employees. Uh, Pre-written articles on the different themes. Uh, video call backgrounds. So you can actually uh, come October, I will have one of those Zoom backgrounds uh, for myself. Uh, social media and then downloadable versions of the logo. So the government's really done a great effort in putting all of this together because they know it's a difficult topic for people. So they're really providing you all of the resources. So yeah, so you could do it right now and go become a cybersecurity champion. As I said, it's no cost. Uh, you can then use it with your own employees and your own uh, customers to let them know that you're involved and maybe get them involved as well. Yeah, that's an awesome resource. Um, and Lynn says she did it and thank you. <laughs> so that's great. Um, I actually did put that link in the chat for you guys. Um, you are, if you're busy and you're on your way to a meeting, you are gonna get the slides in an email. So we're gonna send this out as soon as the recording is available. Um, so don't worry trying to you know rush to do this. You can do this when I send this out. I'll send all of the, the links that you're seeing here. So you'll have those. Um, I think we've got all of the questions. Thank you, Tom. We really appreciate it as always. Um, so sorry about that. We always appreciate you uh, answering so many questions for us and spending time with us. And we are looking forward to the workshops that are coming up uh, September 21st and September 22nd. Yes, those will be the first ones. And then we'll have more throughout the, uh, throughout the year. And, and honestly, you know, for me, what I ask of all of you is, I ask a lot of questions. I work with a lot of people in the SBDC about, are we addressing the right topics? I think we are capturing them, but if there's a topic that is just completely confusing you as an individual, whether it be on identity theft or you know how to keep your kids off the internet because they're smarter than you and they keep fixing the router and they keep removing all the parental controls, we can talk about that too. Uh, and then, you know, or if there's a topic that may be directly relatable to a certain industry, just send us an email, let us know, and we will definitely research it and either make it a Facebook Live or, or add it to one of our future presentations. So it's really kind of just, we can deliver whatever you guys need, but we just really need some help from you guys to let us know, you know, if we're delivering the right content or if there's other content that you'd like to see. 
Yeah, absolutely. And um, Tom is available to meet one on one as well. So you can sign up for the workshop and you can also meet one on one with Tom if you have some specific questions or if you want to chat about your business's cybersecurity and where you're at with that. It's always a good idea to review things with him. Um, you can email us help at Virginia SBBC.org. Um, and of course, like I said, you'll get the recording and the slides. You can also sign up for upcoming webinars or access recorded webinars at Virginia SBDC.org slash training. Also on our website is the COVID Business Recovery Center, which we developed to help owners not only continue business operations, but to thrive and recover. These resources are designed to be used in collaboration with your local SBDC advisors. So you can either, uh, you can sign up online or email us if you are looking to meet with your local advisors and Tom, you can meet with both. And then your local advisors can help you in any range of topic um, that you need assistance with for your business. Um, well, thank you again, Tom. And we are looking forward to the workshops and we hope to see everyone there at the next uh, couple of workshops that are coming up. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. You have a great rest of your day. Have a good day, everyone.